Here we are, December 07. It's been about a year and a half since I've initially installed the vegetable oil system on my car, and since then I've made a few modifications. This will hopefully be the third and final video on the installation, as I don't think I can do too much more to increase the heat on the system. Since the last video, I installed this Frybrid heater and filter system. This Frybrid replaced the 2 micron Raycore filter that I had installed there and it was in a coolant jacket if you remember. What I did was I installed the Frybrid and then I just simply reoriented the coolant jacket and placed it on the Frybrid too. This has a 10 micron uh, VW diesel filter that it uses. That's wrapped in a coolant jacket and then here's the heater exchange. So what happens is the hot coolant comes in from the heater core, comes in through here, goes into there, comes out, goes into a 16th plate heater exchange there, and then, then it goes on to the Vormax in the trunk. There were two reasons I decided to work on the system after I installed the Frybrid heater exchange. One was that these three port valves, one here and one here, were on the cowling. I initially wanted to keep the cowling sort of for cosmetic reasons and also for sound. I assume it does that and also to uh, capture more heat. But what I found was is that if anyone ever has to serv service the engine the way I had them mounted before on the cowling, all the tubing and stuff is quite intimidating and someone might not know what they're doing. I didn't really want them messing with my plumbing once I had installed it and if the car had to be serviced because right now the glow plug indicator came on and the car has to go in for service and it was like well this is going to be a problem for them to get in there unless I'm standing there to pull it apart even change the oil because everything was has to go over this dipstick and it was sort of a an issue so what I did is I mounted one three port here and one three port here they were in the same area except I pulled them off of the cowling and got put them here I initially ran the hosing as short as possible, but then I realized, you know, I had the hosing going across here, I had the veg therm across here, and then I realized, well, what happens when someone has to change the oil? So I had to put, pull the veg therm back here, and now the engine's totally accessible. I've lost the cowling, but at least the engine can be serviced, the oil can be changed easily. There's the glow plugs if they need to be serviced, and I can get into it quite easily. There's the fuel injection line heaters. Uh, one thing I did notice after I installed was that this orange insulation tape if you wrap it too thin or pull it too tight it gets too thin and what eventually will happen is it will tear over time um, you, you can go ahead and repurchase this stuff from McMaster car I think it's about fifteen dollars a roll for like fifty feet so it's more than enough but uh, that's one source for it another thing I wanted to do was since I was going to tackle this I thought at the same time I've always wanted to get heated fuel lines because I don't know if you remember from the last videos there are no heated fuel lines on this car with the exception of a couple spots where the lines come together. What I had done initially on the install, and I think I've covered this before, fuel lines were aluminum and they ran from from up in the engine compartment and they ran down and they went up underneath this uh, heat shield for the muffler. Now, even though it's called a heat shield, it's shielding the car body from the heat of the muffler, so really no heat really got to the pipe, so it wasn't like I was getting heat from the muffler. So when the lines were up here, they were more or less up vertically and they weren't touching each other. So I was getting absolutely no heat transfer on the lines, no hose and hose benefit or anything like that along this long run. So what I did is I pulled out the aluminum lines and here they are here. I more or less put them together as best I could. Two coolant, one coolant down to the Vormax, one coolant returning, and then a veggie line to the engine after the Vormax. So what we have here is they've been bundled together. I'm going to go ahead and insulate them. I just wanted to test drive them, make sure nothing was leaking. And it runs here, along here, along here, along aluminum. And then right around here, at different points, it transitions to rubber. And there's a whole mess of tubing back here, but this is like the real fuel tank and fuel in, fuel out. But those lines, the two coolant lines, go up over the axle and you can see them there so that, that was one aluminum line there but they're all going to basically transition to uh, rubber at some point and then it becomes there goes along there goes up there and the other two lines you see are the uh, the other three lines are the uh, diesel fuel that's the vegetable oil to veggie in, veggie out, and then two coolant lines and then that goes up to the diesel tank in the trunk 
And then, as you've seen before, this just goes to the Vormax in the trunk. I was thinking about pulling the Vormax, but I figure there's no harm in keeping it there because it'll just be another heater and another filter and, you know, it's not a bad thing to have since I have it installed, although if I was to do it again, I probably wouldn't install it, at least in the trunk. So that's where the car stands now. I've got heated fuel lines and I moved all the stuff out of the way for mechanics to work on the car should it need service.